so listen up. In this segment, we will cover fraudulent interview editing. Fraudulent interview editing is a technique media professionals use to deceive their audience of the interviewee's intended message. In this episode, we will look at this tactic used for two types of interviews. The first type of interview is when a reporter from Chicago CBS local news station goes on the scene of an incident to report the facts and interview witnesses for their personal reaction. We'll look at what the local news presented the general public, then afterwards we'll take a look at the unedited version. On the street, as young as four, were there to see it all unfold and had a disturbing reaction. No, I'm not scared of nothing. When What's you get older, you gonna stay away from all these guns? No. No? No. What do you want to do when you get older? I'm gonna have me a gun. You because I live right here and I don't want none of my family members to get shot. Sure. Okay, did you notice the news anchor set up their viewing audience by stating that kids on the street as young as four saw it unfold and had a disturbing reaction? What did you think to yourself after viewing that video? What do you think the impression was on the audience? Now hold that thought. Take a look at the unedited version of this interview. When you get older, you gonna stay away from all these guns? No. No? No. What do you want to do when you get older? I'm gonna have me a gun. You are? Why you want to do that? You know what happens? I'm gonna be the police. Okay, well then, then you can have one. Big difference, isn't it? Now think again. What impression would the viewing audience have had if they saw the unedited version of this video? Why would the editors want the viewing audience to come away with the impression that this four-year-old boy wants to grow up and get a gun so he can participate in the violence when he is actually aspiring to be a police officer? What kind of stereotypes does the edited version reinforce? Who gains from reinforcing these types of stereotypes? Would the average person suspect foul play if they saw the edited version? The second type of interview is when Mike Wallace of CBS had a one-on-one -on -one in-depth interview with um, President Ahmadinejad of Iran. Let's look at the portion of the edited version which aired on 60 Minutes. Then we'll look at the unedited version which aired on C-SPAN per Ahmadinejad's request. And then I tried to get the president back to his most inflammatory statement. You are very good at filibustering. You still have not answered the question. You still have not answered the question. Israel must be wiped off the map. Why? Well, don't be hasty, sir. I'm going I'm to get hasty. to that. I think that the Israeli government is a fabricated government. Fabricated following the Holocaust, which he has said may also have been fabricated. It appears that Mike Wallace asked Ahmadinejad about Israel being wiped off the map, and his only answer was Israel is a fabricated government, before he goes into his views of the Holocaust. Now let's see what was edited out of the unedited version, which aired on C-SPAN. You are very good at filibustering. You still have not answered the question. You still have not answered the question. Israel must be wiped off the map. Why? Well, don't be hasty, sir. I'm going I'm to get hasty. to that. I think that the Israeli government is a fabricated government. And I have talked about the solution. The solution is democracy. We have said allow Palestinian people to participate in a free and fair referendum to express their views. What we are saying only serves the cause of durable peace. We want durable peace in that part of the world. A durable peace will only come about with once the views of the people are met. So we said that allow the people of Palestine to participate in a referendum to choose their desired government. And of course for the war to come to an end as well. Why are they refusing to allow this to go ahead? Even the Palestinian administration and government which has been elected by the people is being attacked on a daily basis. And its high-ranking officials are assassinated and arrested. 
Yesterday, the speaker of the Palestinian parliament was arrested, elected by the people, mind you. So, how long can this go on? We believe that this problem has to be dealt with uh, fundamentally. I believe that the American government is, uh, is blindly supporting this government of occupation. It, can, it should lift its support, allow the people to participate in free and fair elections. Whatever happens, let it be. We will accept and go along. This is not done to inform the public. Now let's take it a step further. They also set up a deceptive segue from the statements about Israel being a fabricated government to a statements on the Holocaust. The statements from the Holocaust are from the first three minutes of this two hour interview, which you can see by watching an unedited interview at this link from C-SPAN. So both questions were taken out of their chronological order while the first question was edited grossly out of context. Here are some questions to ask yourself. What types of stereotypes or popular narrative does the edited version reinforce? Who gains from reinforcing this narrative? Would the average person suspect foul play if they saw the edited version? What is more telling is Mike Wallace received a Grammy for this interview. And the piece they played for the audience after they announced him the winner is the very piece that he fortunately edited out of context which is proof that the mainstream community of media professionals reward and celebrate those who are dishonest in their editing. And the winner is CBS News 60 Minutes, President Ahmadinejad. I think that the Israeli government is a fabricated Thank you. Thank you. Iran President Ahmadinejad scares me. Thank you. And as you hear in our interview, he is characteristically attended by the Tehran this past year. What do you think of your government? What do you think I should think about the gentleman? You're perfectly capable of handling that question. Believe it or not, <clears throat> a year ago tonight, no one in this room, me included, knew the first damn thing in the world about Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. What more can we conclude from these two videos? The popular public narrative is that Ahmadinejad wants to destroy Israel with war. Mike Wise was fishing for an answer that supports this narrative. When they didn't get the answers they wanted, they took his statements out of context with fraudulent editing so it would fit the public narrative. If you already believe that he wants to go to war with Israel, then you won't suspect foul play nor have the desire to search for the truth. And being that he got a Grammy for using this deceptive tactic, it is safe to say that Mike Wallace deceptively edited Ahmadinejad's statements to fit the narrative the mainstream media supports, regardless of whether it is true or not. And the four-year-old who witnessed the shooting. His comments also did not fit in a narrative about black kids that the editor was looking for. So they fraudulently edited him in order to reinforce a different narrative. Be skeptical of interviews you see on television. Understand the difference between public figures and the general public. Public figures have access to the mainstream media. So if they are taken out of context, they can use the power of TV and radio to push back against it. Look at their websites or blogs immediately after an interview to get their take on it. If they are not complaining about it, then it was probably in its proper context. Someone from the general public does not have the same recourse as a celebrity or public figure. Like the four-year-old, he doesn't have access to the mainstream media like a celebrity does. So the media can misrepresent statements from the general public without much worry about getting caught, therefore deceptively leading their viewing audience to the conclusions they desire and falsely shaping public opinion.
Thank you.